Um, again, now when we get to blend three, they, they made this a lot more intuitive. But uh, for right now, all hail the yellow border. Now, the other parts of uh, blend, like states, okay, uh, visual state manager stuff would be here. If we're doing a WPF project, that would be a triggers editor. We'll talk about that later when we're building some custom controls. Okay, but that's kind of the quick survey that I wanted to give you all right now, just on the basics of the IDE. So let me flip back over to my slide deck. Okay, so just um, let's just go over this one more time real quick. Remember that the asset library, this guy right down here, okay, that's your chance to include additional widgets that are not currently on your toolbox. Remember over here, we got a couple of different ways we can view the project, right? Um, the property editor is pretty darn elaborate, and it's kind of divided into several categories. I didn't show this, but you can collapse any one of these that you don't care to look at. Okay, and then of course we have objects and timelines. Don't forget about your lovely yellow selection. Okay, a um, couple of other things about the basics. If you are using Blend to throw together a brand new application, so you didn't start with Visual Studio. You know, it's going to follow all the same rules as any WPF or Silverlight project. So you should always give your XAML items a name to generate a member variable in your G file, okay, that auto-generated G file. So the way that we can do that in Blend, we just come to the Properties Editor, and right in the very, very top is going to be your little name area. So that would just add in the uh, expected X colon name equal to your markup. And another thing, too, this can be a little misleading to people. There is a lightning bolt symbol on the properties editor, and I, I'm sure a lot of you know that's kind of your cue to handle an event, right? Well, if we tried to handle an event with this little event editor, it looks like we're going to be able to do it. Let's go see it ourselves. So let's say that I'm over on uh, this image, and I want to play around with an event right now. So I might say, yeah, let's see what happens when the uh, image has a mouse enter. So if I were to type in an event handler here, mouse is in. If I were to hit enter, look what happens again. It just launched Visual Studio. Oh, this, by the way, is not something that you would see. I uh, opened up this project in Blend 3 at one point, so it uh, wants to convert my project. I'll just cancel out of that. So had that not popped up, I would find that Visual Studio right, just added in that new handler for me. So don't think that this is going to be your one-stop shop. Right? This will just kind of configure your markup and launch Visual Studio to you know, put in that completed handler. And another thing about the basics too, I think you're aware that when you make a brand new WPF project or a Silverlight project, the layout root defaults to a grid. Okay? That's cool. In some cases you might want to begin there. But if you were to right click on any one of the layout managers, there's this way to dynamically transform what you want that container to be. Right? Um, so if you would rather have the layout root be a stack panel, you can just go ahead and select it right here. And here's a little note in your slides too. Well, I guess you don't have the slides, but in the video. Again, reminding about the importance of that good old yellow border, right? Um, this is your way to select a nested panel to add in sub-elements. And remember, if you do what I used to do, if you just do a simple one-click selection here, but this guy has the yellow highlight, it's going to be adding everything to the stack panel. And remember, to change who has that input focus, just make sure you do a double-click. Another thing too, is you're building a really complex visual design. Let me just flip back over here to blend. Uh, this would not necessarily be a complex visual design, but you know, as you're building up your application, you might want to just selectively hide or show chunks. So let's say that we're kind of done with this stack panel. If I just click this little eyeball icon, it'll just kind of get that out of view. Now it's still there in my markup, okay? It's just not on the designer. Notice if I were to delete a nested panel, it's going to you know, collapse it on the designer too. So all of a sudden now, I don't have uh, that real estate taken up on the, on the layout root. 
And we can also do similar things too. We can dummy proof it, <laughs> you know, lock something so I can't come in here and indirectly mess it up. Okay, so hopefully at this point you have your bearings on some of the basics of just kind of working with the IDE. What I'd like to do next is talk about that idea of custom content, okay? And I think for this one I'm going to actually make a brand new project, but here's the basic way that it works. Blend has, you know, the ability to zoom in very, very deeply into any selected item. And as soon as you do that, you're able to do something called a direct select and kind of drill into the content of whatever you're looking at. Okay, and then at that point, you're just going to fall back to drag and drop operations. So let's go back to blend. Let's go ahead and close this guy down. No need to save anything. And we'll start from scratch. So I'm going to go under File, New Project. I'll do a WPF application. And I'll call it Simple Blend App. And I'll click OK. So we'll pick C sharp. I can target my framework. We'll leave it at 3.5. This is how things will look upon setup. So again, notice over here in your project area, Blend was kind enough to put together a complete project, right? Presentation core, presentation framework, Windows base. Got my initial, whoop, got my initial window put together here, my initial application. So now I'm going to come over here to the left, over to objects and timeline, and I will add. Let's see, why don't I do this here? Why don't I change this to be a stack panel? And we already have the yellow selection here, so I'm just going to plop on a button. Now I might come over here to my properties editor get out of my event area and let's give him a fixed height and width. We'll make him maybe a uh, hundred wide and we'll make him a uh, hundred high just so I have something to play with. So here under common properties you can see that there is an option for content but this is just going to be a string. Okay, There is not too much that I can do here to put together a nested stack panel for example. So that's where I have to come over here and get a little creative. Okay, so let's double click on the button. Notice how he has the yellow selection now. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay, I'm just doing a control mouse wheel right now. Um, you can also come down here. There's a little zoom area on the lower left of your editor. And you're just going to zoom all the way in here until you get to a point where you feel that you can kind of see what you're trying to do. So I'm going to come over to my tool area. I'm going to pick this direct selection. Okay, this is a, a, a way for you to drill into selected content. So I just double clicked on top of my string. So that was just the system.string, right? I'm going to delete that. And instead, I want to add in here a panel, right? So I could come to my panel areas. Maybe I'll add in a stack panel. So you see now what happened, okay? The button had the input focus. I did a direct select, and now my button contains as direct contact a stack panel. So I'll double click on him, and then maybe I'll just throw in a, I don't know, I'll just make some goofy example. We'll throw in a circle. Let's make this guy a little bigger so we can actually see it. All right. And then I'm also going to add in uh, a text block. So we'll go ahead and select him, and we'll just go ahead and um, maybe we should give these guys a name too while I'm at it. So this will kind of demonstrate the importance of that name, right? So we'll go ahead and call this um, button circle, and I could call this little text block button text. And maybe for his text, I'll just say, click me. Right? 